This is the Brisbane Lions Fancast with Dom Fay and Michael Whiting. Yes, this is a special mid-season edition of the Fancast. We will be joined for an extensive chat with senior coach Justin Lepich a little later on. Just before we get to that, though, Mike, uh, another very disappointing loss to dissect. Yeah, there's no break for us, though, is there, Dom? Might be a mid-season break for the players, <laughs> mm. and they need it, I reckon. They looked out of, out of legs on Saturday, but... I mean, it's not our job to sit here and make excuses for the team, but there was obviously a gastro bug which has been, um, I guess, released that went through the team and claimed Tom Rockliffe and Joel Patfall before the game. There was also a number of other players, including Dane Zorka and Daniel Merritt, who were severely affected by it. And uh, I think were, the Lions were worried at one stage they might struggle to get a team together because they'd only flown a, a couple of uh, emergencies down to Melbourne and, of course, the reserves were in the Northern Territory. But... Uh, st- I mean, that aside, it was a poor way to go into the break, wasn't it? Yeah, it definitely was. I think uh, in terms of the illness, as soon as you saw Rockliffe and Patfall out on Saturday afternoon, you thought, okay, this may not be yep. pretty. <laughs> <laughs> they're, tough, they- got, they're tough cookies, those pair as well, so yeah. they're not, not going to give it up easily. Yeah, so. you can't, you, Tom Rockliffe would almost have to be on his deathbed to miss a game. Yeah, illness, exactly. And Sam Mays obviously being concussed in the training session prior to the match on Thursday wasn't it good as well. So... Uh, I guess circumstances conspiring against the Lions a little bit there with with what talent they have left in the squad that's already that's uninjured, um, but it's just not a, not a great way to enter the break and sort of a bit of a downer after a good performance against Essendon the week before. But we're one and eight at the break. That's what it is, and that's what the Lions have to work with. And it'll be interesting to hear what Justin Lepich has to say later in our show today. Absolutely, I think if we were to dissect the season so far in the first nine matches, you'd say that. The major positive has undoubtedly been the kids. I mean, we probably thought that we drafted pretty well last year. You never really know until they Mm. play footy, but now you're sitting here thinking that we have dominated that draft. You've got kids, probably five or six of them there, who you think definitely... So Aish, Robertson, Cutler, Taylor, and Gardner, who you think these could all be long-term players for the club all from the one draft. Yeah, exactly. You were hoping when you had six in in the first two rounds, you're hoping that definitely three and... You know, probably four you'd hope that would come off as long-term players. And it's still to play out. I mean, they're in their first year. But all signs are, you're exactly right. The the five guys that you just mentioned there that have played, have, they've been terrific, really. They've, they've all shown more than glimpses that they could have long careers at the club. And we haven't seen anything of Daniel McStay yet. But uh, it'll be exciting when he gets a go as well. And we haven't seen John O'Freeman either. So, But the five that have played have shown more than flashes. And give the club plenty of hope. It's a little way down the track, isn't it? But plenty of hope for the... For the Lions supporters, if they stick in for the long haul. Yeah, uh, undoubtedly. I suppose then you, you have to look at sitting here, you know, one and eight. Did you think this would happen? Because honestly, I remember we sat here pre-season and we both said that we uh, tipped the Lions to not make the eight, but, you know, finish maybe around 11th or 12th. Uh, consolidation year, definitely not a year where we'd probably go backwards as far as we have. Obviously, new game plan, new coach, injuries have played a big part in that too. But would you say that it has been a tremendously disappointing first half of the year? It's certainly been disappointing. Like we can't, it's hard to quantify the value of the players that haven't played. I think at the start of the year, if you ask Justin Lepich, the 22 he wanted to play and, and, and even factoring in um, getting games into some of the young guys, you would have wanted Brent Staker in there, no doubt. He would have played a majority of the season. Matthew Lewenberger, Daniel Rich, those guys would have played the entire season. So there's three players off the top of my head straight away. You've also had guys like... Pierce Hanley missing games, Tom Rockliffe missing games. Only a couple here and there, but they've still missed games. John O'Brown's missed a game. Uh, Daniel Merritt's been suspended. Like There's a, just a, not many experienced guys to pick from, mm. not many of them playing. So uh, Justin Lepich has said it a number of times that you don't want to have to, ideally you don't want to have to run out 17 ages every week, but that's what they've been faced with. But I still think it's a little disappointing. Just the... The I guess the drop off from their from their good play like we've seen competitiveness against Essendon bits and pieces against Richmond and the St Kilda game with, and Hawthorne as well and Hawthorne like we've seen that they can be very competitive but just the drop off when when they lose that effort and lose that run the drop off's just a bit too much for mine. So this is our second year of the Fancast. I remember saying just before we started the first year the big focus for this year for season 2013 no more blowouts. <laughs> Said it again this year. It seems to be an incurable kind of disease right now. <laughs> yeah. How do we stop these blowouts in the second? half of the year. Boy, it's tough, isn't it? Because I think Lep has set the game up to try and stop those <laughs> blokes who've been trying to teach defence first, I suppose, and, and let the let the attack flow from there. So, I, I don't know. We're going to speak to the coach and hopefully he'll have some answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so looking uh, ahead then to this, the second half of these, uh, the season, I know this isn't exactly halfway, but it is more or less. Mm. Looking to the second half of the season, we have uh, an easier draw. It was a very rough and we always knew it would be very, very rough, rough yeah. first nine we, we can't We can't forget that either. Like yeah. Even with all those good players playing, 
we, you know, how many extra wins would you have expected as a supporter of the Lions? Maybe, maybe two extra wins, possibly. Like mm. the, the Gold Coast match wasn't wasn't really that should have been a fifty fifty match, and um, but that was certainly no gimme by any stretch. No matter who was on the park, that's about it. There's most of those other games, Brisbane were going to go in as underdogs anyway. Yeah, which I suppose is why it was the fashion that we were be mm. in which we were beating right. that makes it most disappointing. Which uh, I suppose then you think heading into the second half of the season, you'd want maybe one or two more blowouts at most. You wouldn't want to be seeing any more or many more 50-plus point losses. Yeah, that's right. I think I think um, off the top of my head here, and I, sh- I should have done a bit more research, but I think <laughs> Fremantle have played, uh, Brisbane have to play Fremantle twice. There's also Geelong away and Collingwood away. So there's a couple of difficult matches in there, but the second half does open up. There's the matches immediately after the bye against uh, Carlton, the Western Bulldogs, and GWS. There's also Melbourne thrown in there. Richmond are struggling there in there again. So there's winnable matches, and... You're exactly right. There shouldn't be many blowouts in the second half of the year. Sitting here right now in the bye week, do we win the wooden spoon? Uh, without looking at the draws from the other clubs, I th- it may be optimism. I think Brisbane can get away with it. I'm not sure that teams like I'm not sure what teams like St Kilda and Greater Western Sydney have got left in them. They've got a few extra runs on the board at the moment, but I guess when Brisbane plays those teams, they've got to beat them. It'll be the, the, they'll, I think Brisbane will be in the bottom four. There's no doubt about that, but. Uh, I guess there's that bit of optimism. You'd like to think they can sneak enough wins to, to get away from it. Some fans might want it. They might want that number one draft pick, but I think you want to, I think you want to avoid the wooden spoon if you can. Yeah, no, I think a few more wins uh, does a lot more for confidence than a number one draft pick. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that is probably a, a pretty comprehensive review of the season so far. We'll go a bit more in depth with senior coach Justin Lepich right after this on the Fancast. The best way to keep track of everything Lions is to head to lions.com.au. It's the first place to find the latest Lions news and videos get the lowdown on upcoming games, results and player stats. There's also great ways to interact with live chats, downloads and Player of the Year voting updates. And with a social media hub, you can connect with all the Lions social media activity. Lions.com.au. Everything Lions, all in one place. Joining us on the Fancast today is senior coach Justin Lepich. Thanks very much for uh, joining us, Lepich. Halfway through your first season, how are you feeling? Uh, yeah, good. Um, I think we've, um, you know, we've we've done a lot. We've actually implemented a lot of things over the pre-season, a lot of changes. Um, obviously, just in game planning and personnel. So um, there's been a fair bit go on. We haven't had the, I guess, the uh, wins on the field that we would have liked. But um, yeah, but all in all, I think things are going well. I guess fans look at um, wins and losses, Lepper. How much should we be judging the season so far on, on that scale? Ah, uh, well, if you're judging on that, you'd say it'd be disappointing. So there's, I guess, for us. Um, you probably have to do it once um, the rounds are complete, really. Um, we've played, in our nine games, we've played six uh, top eight teams, and um, that's sort of been, uh, so we've been given, I guess, a tougher start with our fixturing that light, lightens up a little bit, I guess. When you play every team, it gives you a bit of an indication where you sit. Um, but on current form, with the injuries we've got and the players we play, and we probably sit in the bottom six of the ladder. That's probably the reality of um, the team we've got at the moment. I'm just wondering about the morale within the club and within you know the playing group and the and the coaching group. Is it uh, low at the moment, or are you guys all feeling pretty good about how things are, are sitting? Oh no, we're we're really good. Um, <laughs> no, don't have to worry about morale. I mean, that's uh, I guess everyone gets disappointed after a loss. Um, so that part's just you know that part you know straight after a game is always a bit low. But um, you know we we have a plan in place. We've got a journey. We know where we're on. Um, you don't see anyone moping around the. The rooms here are all in a, it's a really learning environment. We know where we need to get to. Um, some things will happen quickly. Some will take a bit of time. Um, that's the nature of football as well. You know, the, the environment of AFL is, is made, so you have your ups and your downs. Um, and so you can't be um, through the through the lower periods when you're playing younger players. You can't create um, a really sour and down environment. It has to be more upbeat than ever. How much have you had to change on the go, Leper? It's the start of your coaching career, but I'm sure you would have expected a a certain 22 to be on the field at the start of the year and you've had a few injuries and um, and whatnot and the odd suspension or two. How much have you had to adjust, obviously, having to play a lot more, I guess, sort of younger guys than you would have originally thought? Well, you probably have to adjust your expectations a little, um, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I knew this year we had to play, all our best players have to be playing well for us to sort of um, be a competitive middle road team. Um, so without those players either being available or Playing at their best, this is where we are. So that's that, that's that was the realities of the situation. It, 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 probably a lot of things, if you say, a lot of worst case scenarios have probably come through. Um, to be perfectly frank, so it's um, 
So, uh, yeah, so that part's been a little bit unfortunate. But as I said, we're all up, but we're all working through the... Uh, all working through it, and um, we're quite confident. We've got a six-week patch coming uh, up now before our next break. Uh, we've got some real opportunities in that uh, six-week break, so we're all um, going to go off the buy and come back really fresh, ready to go. A few years ago, the club put out a strategic vision, uh, hoping for a premiership by 2016. I'm pretty sure the chairman said in the career mail a few weeks ago that that strategic vision is obviously no longer relevant because so much has changed. But I'm just wondering, have you got any kind of long-term vision, any kind of idea of when you think the group that you're bringing through now will be challenging for finals, or is that stuff not even on your radar yet? Oh, probably not on the radar. Um, when the when the new CEO's in place and uh, and all those things get settled down, that will be discussed. I mean, I think it's probably ambitious for any club to put a, a time frame on a premiership. I mean, you know, Ross Lyon, who's considered one of the Great coaches at the moment hasn't won one yet, but they've been to the uh, big dance a few times. So you can't put a premiership as an end goal because it's probably unfair to, to those because that can be just one kick, a couple of injuries or whatever away from being a win or a loss. So um, I think you can always put measures on when you're going to be a contender or be a, a competitive team in the middle of the road or you can also obviously know when you're in the developing stage as well. So um, without putting, um, uh, I guess, anything uh, before it's been planned, I, I think you know we'll all have a bit of a say in, on that when that time comes. But that's probably a little bit away yet when, as I said, the CEO gets in and everything gets settled. Uh, Lepra, are you more sure um, than you were at the start of the season after seeing the, uh, I guess, the, the performance of the young kids that, you're, that you've got a list that you think can make its way up the ladder and sort of progress towards the finals? Or are you, or are you still a bit undecided about where your list's at at the moment? Oh, no, I know what we need. Um, make no mistake, there's going to be players this year and the next that won't be at the football club. Um, whether we have to make six or eight changes now and that the, the year after, the changes will be made to, to get the list exactly how we want it. One thing we're confident in, I mean, I've been in the AFL game 22 years now, I'm very confident in the system itself. The system's designed for you to draft players, retain them, keep them, and then develop to a very good team. That's the way the system is. So we have to, we're a part of that. We have to play that. It's very difficult to buck that trend. Um, so we we know what phase we're in. Um, we know we've drafted well. I think all our fans will see that the kids that are out there now are, are very good players and they'll develop into good players. Um, so we just have to continue that process and we know t- another t- time will catch up to those players and experience and, and, and bodies will get bigger and faster and, and more efficient and um, we'll become a better team. When looking towards uh, making the list what you want it to be and, and filling those holes, uh, will you be looking much at, at trading or do you think it will be in the majority a, a draft build? Uh, look, that, that's hard to say. Generically speaking, if you go off history, the teams at Hawthorne Geelong very similar and, and Brisbane when I um, was drafted, the first couple of years is built around the draft. Um, whether you can include the Sam Mays year and the first year for us and now this year now. Um, but, yeah, there'll come a period over the next year or so where we start looking to the draft and free agency, but you do have to build, I guess, the, the, the kids coming through. Um, whether we do both this year or whether we go solely on the draft, that'll really depend on what's on the table. Um, it's very hard to answer that definitively right now, but um, it'll be very uh, unlikely we trade our first-round pick um, unless it was something obviously um, remarkable. Leper, will we see? We've seen five kids so far this year. Will we see more debut in the second half of the season? Well, here we have a couple more. Archie Smith, our young ruckman, hasn't debuted yet. Um, obviously, Trent West has shouldered the load, and whether we give uh, Archie a crack at it before Lewenberger comes back, that's sort of a question. He's going quite well in the reserves. Um, he, obviously, he's only a rookie, but we have some space available with Daniel Rich being off the list um, with his injury. Um, and also, you know, Dan McStay hasn't shown his face either. He's been uh, in pretty good form in the reserves as well. So there's a, there's a couple of opportunities there for guys to come through. Um, young Berkey also as a rookie. He's been going well. So um, that'll be a bit of a week-to-week thing. But there, there is a good possibility we'll have another one or two debuts by the end of the year. You did mention just before that there are a number of players who, you, you put it quite bluntly, won't be on the list in the coming years. Are there a number of players at the club who you would say are more or less on notice now that they, they have to perform and they have to perform soon to keep their spot? Oh, look, we're on, a, on notice business every week. <laughs> but don't worry, we, one thing about AFL football, you get the most amount of feedback playing AFL football than you will in any job you'll ever have in your life. Um, it's week to week, even day to day at times. So um, the, the players get the feedback. Um, sometimes, as I said before, some things are fixed easily. Some things take time um, because of... Uh, the nature of what their problems are. Leper, one of those guys with a question mark over his head seems to be 
uh, Brent Maloney. He played the first few weeks and then you've left him out the last few. What does he need to do to, I guess, demand a spot back in the team and show you that he's, um, you know, the, I guess, the way forward? Well, I guess the way our, um, midfield's made up at the moment, we've got three genuine insiders in uh, Red and Maloney and Leicester and uh, we've started the year playing those, which kind of hurts us a little bit on the spread. So you'll see Thorco go in there for Patches and Green and uh, players like that uh, go through that part of the ground. So um, it, it, realistically, I mean, Ryan spent some time out of the team with Brent in it, so it's a bit of a competition for those spots. Um, I, I, the challenge to Brent was to add other things to his game, a little bit like Rainsy, how I guess we'd all see him as a tagger only, and he you know, took him back to the reserves, played some wing and high forward and did that really well and came into the team doing that. So he was able to play multiple positions, so um, to add another string. So uh, Brent's been given that information. He hasn't had a great couple of weeks in the reserves either. Um, uh, at the NEFL level, so it's sort of uh, whether we bring him back in just for his experience because currently at this point in time his, his form isn't probably red hot um, so it's just, uh, as I said, they're the questions we've got to ask ourselves. Another player who it seems may have fallen out of favour a little bit or, or maybe just fallen out of form uh, is Ryan Harwood who is, I suppose, especially in the second half of last year, uh, a lock in the best 22. Can you tell us where he's at? Uh, well, I mean, Ryan's pr- probably similar again. He's not playing up to the standards. I mean, that's you know, that's that's where we're at. So we, we bring young players in, some have to go out, and there's a standard that's getting set. Um, you know, Sam Mays, Tom Cutler are playing those positions at the moment. We just find uh, athletically they give us a little bit more in those positions. So that's that's really it. I mean, uh, Ryan's had that, that feedback as well um, about his game and where he's at. And look, I'm hopefully he's he improved. He's got a lot of good qualities to his game, Ryan. He's a really good kick um, and really good dash and drive. So he's got some really good qualities that I'd love to use um, within our game as well. So I'm hoping he can... Uh, he's had some good form in the NEFL, so I'm hoping he can get his way back in the team soon. You mentioned Sam Mays there, Leper. He played forward in the first few weeks and, and did a really good job. And then I think with the injury to Daniel Rich, you've moved him to that half-back line. How have you seen his form in those past few weeks? And is that somewhere you'll sort of persist with him, do you think? Yeah, look, it's sort of been, yeah, with the Richie departure a little bit. We've had that spot open up and... Sam did well as a forward. He was kicking a few goals. He's probably only getting his half a dozen disposals. I didn't think that was the right way to go for Sam this year, to sort of play him in a position where he's only going to get limited limited ball and, and kick a few goals. I didn't think that was great for his development. I think this, this half-back role has been great for him. He's learned how to play on a player uh, and continuing to learn how to do that and also then how to use his offensive game from that. So uh, it's one we're going to stick with for the rest of the year, I think. I mean, you might see him in the wing at times and through midfield and possibly forward, but the, the big core of the rest of the year for him is about um, teaching him the right habits and, um, as I said, playing on a player, trying to beat them and work off. And I think he's doing a really good job doing that. Uh, looking off-field momentarily, when you accepted the job, you came into a, a club that, in terms of its administration and at, at board level, was a little bit unstable. Is it frustrating for you that, you know, six, seven, eight months on, there is still an element of that instability there? I wouldn't say instability. I guess there's some issues that the public talk about a little bit, particularly the, the Springfield stuff that's, um, you know, and it's more an education thing for the public. And that's probably something the club need to do better at is ed- educating the public on, on, it, on our new training base and what that may look like. I mean, let's be honest, there's no funding. There's nothing even there in place yet. Um, so it's all a bit of probably and maybe. So, um, you know, there's still a bit of uncertainty that will even happen. So, um, look, as far as the club, um, you know, mechanics go, everyone's happy and in order. It's just a few of those issues that I guess to educate the public on our training base. We're not leaving the Gabba. Nothing's ever going to change there. Um, it's just whether we spend a few days a week, um, 20 minutes down the road or two kilometres down the road. I guess that's the only real issue. And and uh, I, I don't think really the, the punters don't often turn up to training, so it won't affect them too much. Is it easy to distance yourself that uh, from that though, Justin? Because uh, obviously the footy department plays footy, but all this other stuff seems to crop up, you know, in the media and it's what people talk about. It's what the fans seem to talk about. Is it easy for you guys to sort of shove it aside or is it sort of a little bit in your face and you you have to sort of deal with it somehow? Oh, it's probably not in your face. It's one of those, because you don't deal with it on a daily basis. It's one of those annoying things that people ask you about that you really don't really care about or want to know about. It's just, <laughs> you know, the, you know the, the chairman and the CEO are, uh, at the time when Malcolm was here, was taking care of it. Um, we knew the path, but it's nothing that's going to help us um, win games or develop players or all the things that are important to coaches and players. Um, but it's something I guess the media talk about and the fans want to know about. But um, as I said, realistically, we we're here to you know get the best full team possible. Um, so that that's really the core of our conversations. It's not the external stuff. 
Um, I know that the public probably find that hard to believe, but we don't walk into change rooms and talk about the Springfield facility or who's going to going on the board or off the board or any of those those sorts of things. That's not that doesn't come up in conversation at all. Uh, back on field, just uh, quickly now. Uh, there has been obviously with Richmond this year a, a fairly disappointing season that they've had, and there has been a bit of talk that you're implementing a similar game plan to what Richmond are trying to play. Has it concerned you at all how poorly they've been going, or is, is again that not really a concern for you at all? Uh, <laughs> no, it's not, it doesn't really. I mean, the only thing that concerns me the way they're going is obviously got good attachments at the football club, and I wish them well. I don't think. Um, the, Rich, the Richmond team and the Brisbane team have any similarities at all, to be perfectly frank, of, of where we're at in our development and the players we've got and where we're heading. So um, I'm not sure whether that, that line's drawn. Maybe because I've, I've spent some time there, I guess that's an easy one to draw. But no, I don't see, think that our position right now is any any reflection on where they're, they're at. There's another one on field then, Justin. You've had to move Daniel Merritt or you've decided to move Daniel Merritt forward recently to play a few games there. Is that... Uh, a bit of a stopgap measure or something you're thinking of persisting with a bit longer term? No, I'm not sure yet. It'll really depend on Daniel, won't it? Um, I guess he's formed down as a defender early days, even before he got suspended in that swallow incident. wasn't great. Um, so, uh, you know, and I guess that's why that, in that ruck forward role became avail- available after Matthew Lewenberger went down. So that's why those two met together. Um, so it's a combination of those two things. If he was absolutely braining them in defence or that move may not have happened. So, as I said, it's a combination of those two things. Time will tell with that one. Um, Daniel's obviously got a long history of being a great fullback, um, but that doesn't mean you've got a long future of doing that role either. Um, you know, you have to be current in the game. You have to make sure you're always playing at your best. So, um, they're, they're, they're the challenges there. I, I think that the time he's been rucked forward, he's been really solid. He's probably been better as that sort of forward tall than he has pinching in the ruck than that uh, key defender at this point. So, that's probably why we've gone more that way. Uh, just quickly before we let you go, just uh, two more. Firstly, one from Twitter. I put on Twitter we were getting you on the show, and Matt has tweeted, and he wants to know, uh, because Burke and uh, O'Brien, as well as Smith, have been playing pretty well in the NEFL. Uh you, you mentioned Smith might be a chance, but do you think there is there is much of a chance of seeing some rookies get games in the second half of the season like those guys? Yeah, it's a possibility. And Zach, Zach has been going where His name has been mentioned over the last month in match committee. Um, so it's always a good sign when your magnet's getting moved. Um, whether... We do that now or down the, down the track. Um, as I said, they're the week-to-week decisions. It's hard to answer sort of um, now, but he's playing well enough to suggest that he will come in if he continues his form up. And uh, just lastly, before we do let you go, uh, what do you want to get out of the second half of the season for it to be a success for you? Are you looking at wins? Are you looking at no more blowouts or fewer blowouts? What's, what's your, I suppose, indicators for the second half of the year to be a success? Uh, probably both of those. We've, just, uh, we've got a six-week block after this break, and... Um, that's been our focus. We've, we've really looked hard at you know, this part of the year coming up. It's hard to sort of look at sort of the 12 weeks ahead, but the, the sort of six weeks coming is a real focus for us to make sure we'll get some players back into the team. Obviously, we had a fair bit of illness last week, so we'll have four changes probably already just by those players coming back. Um, so yeah, so we'll have a have a you know get a, a team back together a little bit, but just get our. I guess you've seen the games where we've sort of been competitive against Essendon and St Kilda, and we've, we actually show that we can match it with those teams, particularly in the middle part of the ladder. The top four teams have really struggled with uh, this year, but those teams through the middle part of the ladder, we've, I found we've been really competitive with. So um, it's, it's just building the confidence to get the wins. The wins will come if we build the competitiveness. That's just a fact. Um, you can't be thinking about saying, oh, we want to get four wins or we want to get five wins. It's hard to say that because um, the most important thing for us is building the consistency. Well, thanks very much uh, for joining us on the fan cast today and all the best with the second half of the season.